morning everyone i am tanya from the product marketing team here at webengage and today i'm going to be talking about automated workflows or journey designer i'm going to discuss how you can get started with journey designer what are the basic use cases you can implement and how is it that a journey designer helps you um creating campaigns helps you spend less time on creating campaigns and also get the maximum result engagement and roi out of your journey designer campaigns so let's get started so just to address the question of what a journey designer is and what it can help you achieve i will just take this example that you can see on your screens right now which is when a user cl clicks on an advertisement for your platform comes onto your website or your app reads through your article or goes through multiple articles and then ends up signing to the newsletter so to this user who's done a successful newsletter sign up you would ideally want to communicate a message like you can see on your screens right now so it's an action that the user took on your platform and based on that action you were able to provide some experience on um, let's say email to that user so now what journey designer helps you do is it helps you go one step ahead and design what the next step of this user looks like or what the journey for this user would look like so on the far right you can see i've created this small flow of sorts when a news when a user signs up to your newsletter you send them a welcome email and then what do you want to do next with that user or what is the next objective or what is the next step that you would want the user to take is something that the journey designer can help you build strategize understand and analyze as well now there are multiple components within the journey designer that i'm just going to get uh, uh, get started with in the next slides but just to give you an essence of why uh, we're using journey designer i've taken this very small example on the left hand side let's say you want to set up one basic trigger campaign on the left hand side i've considered the scenario of what happens when you set up a manual campaign for it so let's say you have one basic trigger campaign to set across five channels and you for this you will have to create five different campaigns on one campaign on each of these channels which will take you about 1 to 2 hours or even more now if you have to execute the same campaign a uh, same basic trigger campaign using a journey designer you can incorporate all the five channels within just one journey designer campaign and it will probably take you around 15 minutes or so to set your campaigns so it's one time effort it's one time setup and your journey and your campaigns can run on autopilot using the journey designer so i'm just going to briefly discuss the use case the advantages of using journey designer so firstly like we discussed it's intent based any action that the user takes on your platform or any change in the user attribute you can use that as your trigger to start your journey campaigns journey designer follows a very simple drag and drop interface which makes it very easy for you to set up campaigns within minutes it also provides you with real time analytics in terms of how many entries you have within your journey how many exits and how many conversions resulting out of the entries and exits in your journey designer campaign third a fourth is it helps you contextualize your message strategy once you define the intent of the user or the action that triggers the journey you can contextualize and also personalize your messages accordingly fifth is you can leverage all the engagement channels available to you on the web engage dashboard including email sms push web push and more and lastly it helps you reduce your manual effort in in that sense that it helps you create these campaigns that you can run on autopilot you can identify basic journeys of user for example welcome cart abandonment post purchase and you can have these journeys running for every time a user qualifies for these intent and have them follow on this journey wherein you decide what the next step is and how a user should be communicated and what that communication should look like so now we'll get a little bit into the mechanism of journey designer i'll help you understand the basic components of journey designer and creating a campaign using journey designer so the first component is trigger trigger is something that will start or will be the starting point of your journey campaign it will be something that will 
sort of act like an audience for you and once you've defined this is how users will enter into your workflow and be qualified um to start on that journey path so there are five basic triggers here the first one is occurrence of an event now this can be any custom event that you have on your web engage dashboard these events could also be something like cart a uh, product added to cart product viewed product purchased and so on the second is when a user enters or exits a segment so for example i have a segment for dormant users and whenever somebody enters this segment i would want to trigger a journey nudging users to purchase or to convert using my platform the third is when there is a change in user attribute so it could be anything from if the user attributes uh, has changed from um, location or the user or something that the user did on your platform has caused and has caused a change in the user attribute the fourth is you can also run these journey campaigns for a specific csv file that you can upload and the fifth is you can geo target users based on their location the second is conditions now conditions are something that will define uh, or provide logic to your workflow conditions can be answered using a simple yes and no format so it follows a yes and no logic and it has the five components for example if the first one is if the user is in a segment so for example if a user is in the newsletter subscribed or newsletter sign up segment you can trigger a separate communication for that users versus for users who have not signed up to a newsletter the second component is if a user has done an event you can here check if the user has done an event and answer that with a yes or a no logic and follow your flow of journey designer accordingly third is you can check for a user attribute you can check if a particular user attribute exists or doesn't if it does exist you would want to follow a different flow or a different path for those users if it doesn't then you would want to follow a different path fourth if is a user is reachable so this is very helpful in understanding that if a user is reachable on any given action that you have uh, uh, that, that you have put next now this could be anything from send email to send sms to send whatsapp and fifth is a new inter newly introduced feature that we have on the platform which is check best channel so we our system intelligently decides the best channel for each user on your platform and accordingly identifies and sends communication on those best channel once i get into the live demo i'll be showing you how exactly you can use this block in your journey campaigns the third component is flow control now flow control will help you understand or help you space how the user experiences the journey or the time duration of when the user experiences the actions within your journey there are six basic flow controls that you can um, choose from the first is the wait block wherein you wait for some time the second is you wait for a particular time slot the third is where you wait for a user to complete an event and then you follow if the user has completed the event versus if the user has not completed the event fourth is you wait for a date fifth is a newly added feature which is split what it does it is splits your users into two or more buckets and then you can identify which user or what experience you would want for each user in this split um, journey to experience i'll also be going over the split block once we're in the live demo view and the last is end journey wherein you understand that you would want to end journey for a specific user who has either done an event or you don't want to be pushy anymore and you just want to end your communication or your workflow with that user at that point in time the fourth component is actions now actions are nothing but what you want to communicate to the end user so it varies from all the action triggers or all the engagement channels that you have on the web engage dashboard from email sms push web push um in app um uh, inline content inline web content um all of these are action triggers that you can also assign in your journey campaigns and this is again something this is i'll be walking through once we're in the live demo view 
so journey designer beyond uh, helping you create these campaigns that you can run on autopilot another great feature of this is you can track your performance in real time you can understand how many conversions you got out of any journey campaign that you are running how many entries and how many exits have been there in that particular campaign and once you narrow it down within the blocks you can also see certain stats so you can see the number of users who have entered the number of users who exited a certain block and the number of users who are still in journey or are pending to complete their journey similarly for your action blocks also you can see the number of entries and on the right you see the bar graph symbol by clicking on it you can go into the this send email campaign and understand what the user journey was like how many conversions did you get out of, get out of this email what was the open rate click rate for this email and so on so you can view the stats for every action block that you create in your journey campaign now before i move on to the use cases um, i'd like to go into the live view and show you how your journey uh, section looks like so if you go to the overview this is what your um, overview will look like at an overview level you can understand the users who you've engaged the number of campaigns you've run the number of conversions you've got and the amount of revenue you've got you can also understand or analyze this based on tags and you can also understand the unique clicks over time unique conversions over time and also map out revenue and the delivered um, numbers now what happens once a journey is live so once a journey is live you will have a view which is something of this sort towards the left you can see the number of users who are currently in your journey you can see the total entries the total exits you can see the segment and you can also see that we have assigned exit trigger now exit trigger is something that you can assign in your journey designer and once that event or that at user attribute is reached the users will exit from this journey and will no longer be receiving or going through your journey so over here you can see that the status shows running you have two options here which is either to stop or to sunset and you also have the option to download the report click a screenshot or use this to enter a user id and see what path that particular user has gone through now if i come to the journey view you can see the 7.7 .7 number here which is the number of entries within this block of your journey designer now in the wait block you can see there were again 7.7 .7 users who entered this block there were 58 users however who exited the block now this could be because they were successfully because they successfully did the exit trigger event which caused them to leave the journey and there are 20 users who are still within um, this block and are awaiting to go further down the journey in the send email you can see the stats option and once you click on it you can understand uh, the the conversions that you got the sent the unique the clicks the opens and everything so now i'm going to go to a journey designer create a sample journey and explain some steps to you so these are the triggers that we talked about earlier this will identify how you would want to start your journey for any user that you have on the platform you have all your actions here using which you can tailor make or customize every user's experience on each platform you have the condition block here and the flow control block here you can add your exit trigger by here which can be done on the basis of when a user does an event when a user enters or exits a segment or when a user's profile attribute changes so for example i'm going to select my exit trigger on the on the basis of when a user does an event so i'll say when the user successfully makes a purchase i want those users to exit my journey campaign you can also set up conversion tracking here and select the event i can again select the purchase made event and have a conversion deadline of 7 days or more you can also set up frequency capping and dnd from over here and once you're done you can click on save to apply those frequency capping and dnd 
you can again get a screenshot of your entire journey canvas from here and let's get started with some basic use cases now so i've divided my use cases into four different buckets or some um level one use cases that will help you get started with journey designer on the web engage dashboard so the first one is life cycle stage the example that i've taken here is of a very simple welcome and onboarding campaign however you can also take more examples of user who enter your dominant um, um section or users who enter an at risk uh, life cycle stage and run your campaigns accordingly so for example in my welcome and onboarding example here i have selected my trigger as when a news uh, is when a user signs up for a newsletter and we'll now go into the live view to see how i've created the journey screenshot that you can see on the right so i've selected my trigger as an occurrence of an event and i've identified that event as when newsletter was subscribed so users as soon as they subscribe to my newsletter they will enter into this journey flow and i've uh, applied a time block here however you can also do this through a frequency capping and dnd setting but since i didn't have that in place i felt like selecting this block So what I've done here is I am waiting for the user's time zone, and in my user's time zone, I'm targeting any day. You can select weekdays, weekends, or any other day if you would want. And I want my campaign to be delivered anywhere from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Once you click on save, then users will only proceed from this block with the time that you've specified. The next is I check for the event. I'll again check if a, if the newsletter has been subscribed to. If yes, I will check if the user is reachable on email. So if the user is reachable on email, I will send an email campaign. If not, I have arbitrarily selected a web push campaign for you. It can be any of the action um, blocks that we have here. So once the email gets sent, I'm waiting for two days, and similarly for my web push as well. the reason why i selected web push here is because since this is a new user you might not have all the data or all the information on this user which is why i selected email because i the user has subscribed to a newsletter so by default i have that user's email address and for users that i would not have more information on i can uh, simply send a web push next step is that i wait for 2 days and then i check if the user was seen before the last two weeks on my platform or on your app or on your website if the user was seen to me it signifies that the user still seems value in uh, the content that i have on the platform then i'd want to nudge that user further and send an email if no i would wait for a, another two days and then send a web push now if my web push has been viewed by the user i would want to send the same email that i had sent before and this email can be a nudge to the next step that you would want the user to take after subscribing to the newsletter so for a bfsi in fintech it could be nudging users to make an investment decision or to get started with investment or to complete your kyc but if the user closes the uh, the web push this signifies to me that i should not be pushing that user more and i have put an end journey block here you can save your draft and you can publish your journey now or you also have the option to publish your journey later wherein you can decide when you want to start your journey and you can also choose the end date and schedule your journey accordingly so this was the first example of what happens when a user comes to your uh, uh, website and signs up for a newsletter how you can do the welcome and onboarding flow for your user now again the basic skeleton or the basic structure would remain the same however the nudges that you're sending to your users or the flow that you are selecting for your users or the time block or the time duration that you're setting for your users might change the second use case is based on an action that the user takes now the action that i've defined here is a product or a category viewed 
So if a user comes onto your app, views a particular product or a particular category, you'd want to take that user on a journey and nudge that user to explore more products from the same category or to end up buying the same product that the user had viewed. So let's go into the live view and see how this journey was created. The entry trigger that I've selected here is the occurrence of an event. And my event is category viewed. You can also filter out what the category would look like. For example, my subcategory here is equal to dresses. So this is a journey uh, specifically for users who viewed category equals dresses. And those users will enter into this flow. Now, the second thing that I've done here is I have selected a flow control wait for event uh, block here. And I'm waiting for the event, which is purchase made. And I'm waiting for that event for up to 20 minutes. Again, this can be altered as per your uh, needs and requirements. So I'll wait for the user to complete the purchase in the next 20 minutes. If the event is successful, then I'd maybe want to send a user a nudge saying that, did you like your purchase or uh, rate your experience of your purchase? But what I've done is I've connected the on timeout node to then again check user attribute from the conditions block to see if the user had again come onto my platform and had browsed. So I've selected last seen is before the, the last one hour, which will help me understand that if the user uh, came on category view, did not buy, and then once again um, came onto the website or to the platform but did not take any action, which is why I've connected to the no node. And here is where I've introduced the new block that we have, which is check best channel. Now, what this will do is our system will uh, automatically identify the best channel for each user on your platform based on the past interaction that, that the user has had on your platforms. So for example, if, if a particular user has an affinity to opening more mobile push campaigns received from your brand, then the best channel for that user will be assigned as push. So once you use this block, you can see that you have all these options to set up um, or to uh, connect these nodes to respective action blocks. And this is what I've done here. For push, I have connected the node to send a push uh, notification. For email, I have connected the node to send an email campaign. So accordingly, when a user's best channel is push, the user will receive a push campaign. If your user's best channel is email, the user will receive an email and web push and so on. Another node here that you want to uh, understand is the otherwise node. So for example, a user's best channel is not identified the user is too new into the system for us to be able to understand what um, the user's best channel is or for example there have not been enough campaigns that you have sent to that user for us to identify the best channel you have the otherwise node wherein i've connected a web inline campaign so let's go in and see what's happening within one of your push um, category viewed campaign so what I've done here is I've put a very simple image here. Now this image can again change. This is just for your understanding of how the push would look like. Now, in terms of messaging, what I've put is because I know that this user was looking for a particular category, I'm, I have put in this personalization element. Now you can very easily put this personalization element using the human icon here. What you can do here is select the journey block what will it do is that it will identify from your journey what actions were taken. So since this is based on the category viewed, I'm going to click on category viewed and then select my subcategory. On doing that, it will help me identify that the entry event or the trigger event that got the user onto your platform was the same that you would want to target in your communications. And this is how you can personalize within your campaigns as well. I'm just going to quickly do a user preview for this. So for the um, user preview that I've done, the category was shoes. And you can see that it has 
um, you can see that in your user preview, it reflects shoes. So this is how you can personalize even within the messages that you're sending within your journey designer. Now you can either click save and continue, uh, assign a variation distribution, test your campaign. I'm just going to close it here. So similarly, you can set up personalization for each action block as well. You can do the same for email, for SMS, for WhatsApp, for web push, for web inline as well. So what I've done here is if the user views the push and dismisses my push, I would not want to be pushy and end the user's journey there. But if the user has viewed and if the user has opened your email and the SMS was delivered to the user and in cases and in case of whether your inline was viewed by the user, I have put in a wait block here. Now I'm waiting for the user to perform an event, which is purchase made. If the user has purchased a made, I would not want to go ahead and send another nudge to, to that user because it would be futile to my efforts. But on timeout, which is this node, is where I've connected two other channels to provide an additional nudge to users. One is email and the other one is push. Again, you can either go ahead and put another best channel block here and then send a second or a third nudge to your users. Now, this message could now contain an offer-based campaign. So for example, in the um, action blocks above, you want to just nudge users by saying that, hi, uh, are you still looking for shoes? Are you still interested in shoes? We have a collection of so and so many shoes. You might want to browse that. But in the second one, if you know that the user has interacted, has viewed, has opened, has seen your uh, campaigns, but has still not made a purchase, then you would want to at this stage go ahead and um, either offer a discount coupon or a cashback to your users. Now, this is just a strategy and it completely depends on what you want to follow. So this was the second use case that we discussed, which is action that a user takes on your platform. The third is action a user is yet to take on your platform. Now, a very simple example of this could be cart abandonment. For example, a user came onto your uh, website or your app, selected a product, added that product to cart, but did not end up making a purchase. Let's see how that user journey would look like. So on my cart abandonment journey here, I've again selected my uh, trigger as the occurrence of an event. And what I've done is I've, I've put another wait block from under flow control here. And I'm waiting for the event, the particular event, which is purchase made. And I'm waiting for this purchase made event for up to one hour. Now, it can be anything that you would want to uh, decide. It can be either minutes, hours, days, weeks, or months. That completely depends on you. And once the event is timed out, or I'm sure that this event was not something that the user was was some was not something that the user did, you can connect it to a check user attribute. Now I've gone ahead and followed this simple procedure of checking if the user was last seen uh, on my app or my website in the last three hours. If the user was seen, then I have connected it to the be to check best channel block. And based on the best channel block, I've identified the action that I would want to take. One is email. The second one is push. The third is WhatsApp. And in case of otherwise, I've again gone ahead and shown a web inline content. What you can also do in terms of otherwise is you can send them a web push campaign as well. So on the send of all these three campaigns, email, push, and WhatsApp, I'm again waiting. I've put a wait block for an event, which is purchase made. Now here, my purchase made is for up to one day. And I'll be checking if the purchase was made for up to one day. And once this event has been timed out, I have used the new feature that we have, the new block, it, which is split block. Now, what split block does is it will help you split your audience into two or more parts. And then you can decide what path you want the user to take or what experience you want to experiment with. So I'll quickly go into this block and show you what this looks like. So either you can select the option of intelligent optimization. What intelligent optimization does is that it will automatically adjust the branch distribution, which you can see right now is 50% and 50%. But 
in terms of clicks or conversions which is the optimization criteria based on either clicks or conversions we will help you intelligently optimize this branch distribution so that you don't have to worry about uh, how many users should go to branch a and how many users should go to branch b because that is optimized based on clicks or conversions however if you don't want to select the intelligent optimization option and you want to go ahead and manually select your branches then you can add your branches and you can alter or tweak the percentage just make sure that your percentage distribution adds up to 100 but for my sake here i'm just going to change this to a 50 50 distribution and i'm also going to select the intelligent optimization criteria and my optimization criteria is based on clicks. Once you click on save, then you have the option to connect your nodes branch A and branch B. In case you have added more than two branches or up to five branches, you will have the option to select all the five branches from here. So for branch A and branch B, what I've done is I've done a very simple experiment of what happens when I send the campaign uh, after waiting for an hour versus what happens when I send the campaign after waiting for one day. So I uh, with, with this intelligent optimization optimized on clicks, I will understand that which branch got the maximum number of users. And this will help me understand how my users behave on a cart abandonment email. Does it make sense to send the user a campaign after only just waiting for one hour? Or is one day an appropriate time to wait and send an, another nudge to a user who's done a cart abandonment event? So after waiting for one hour, I have arbitrarily selected um, an action which is send push. What you can also do here is put in a best channel block. And based on the best channel, you can identify what you'd want the user to do. So that's another thing that you can add. For branch B, I have also selected a similar um, action, which is send push. Now, why I've done this is so that I can understand the impact of the hour blocks here and make a decision on waiting or on my wait time if one hour is a sufficient enough wait time or if one day is a sufficient enough wait time. I have also added an exit trigger here, which is on purchase made. So anytime this uh, event is performed, the users will automatically exit the journey. Let's move on to the last um, use case that we have, which is a post-purchase engagement. Now, the example that I've taken here is a cross-sell or an upsell. So for example, a user comes onto your edtech platform, views a course, purchases that course. So after the user has successfully purchased that course, what is the journey you would want your user to take? You would ideally want at this point to upsell similar courses, recommend similar courses to your users and make sure that they buy uh, that particular course or engage with that course. Let's just understand the journey for this. Again, I've started with a very simple journey, which starts with the trigger of occurrence of an event. When the purchase is made for any particular edtech uh, course that you've purchased, I will start your journey. What I've done here is under flow control, I've put in a wait for some time block and I'm waiting for a day. Once I have done or completed my wait, I have put a check event, which is from under conditions, I've put a has done event over here. Now this has done event is based on course started. So if a user has purchased my course and after one day of purchasing the course, the user has started viewing that course or has started interacting or engaging with that course, there are two um, uh, nodes here, yes and no. And based on each of these, I'm going to take my users to two separate paths and follow them into two separate paths within the journey. So if the user has done an event which is course started, which is yes, then I will go ahead and start with my upselling or cross-selling journey for that user, which is something that I've done by, again, using the best channel block. And based on what best channel for that user is, I've selected my action blocks to be WhatsApp, push, and email. You can, again, add more. And what I've done here is for otherwise, I've added my email. 
you can again decide what you want uh, the action block to look like, but it can be anything as per your convenience. Now, to the example of where the user has not done the course started event, I'm sending the user an email. Now this email will basically help them nudge or get started with the course the user has recently purchased. My message with this email could be something on the lines of, hi, you've purchased this event, or you've purchased this course, let's get you started. Here are three simple steps that you can begin your course today. Or here is a quick explainer video that will guide you through how to get started with this um, course. And on, on open, which is this node here, I have put in a wait block for one day. And then I'm using this to sort of, again, see the best channel for the user and follow the same journey for my user. Now, after this action block on send, on push, and on sending of an email, I'm waiting for two days. I've put a wait block for from here. And after I waited for two days, I'm checking for the ev event, which is purchase made. So if you've upsell, uh, if you've used another similar course to upsell to the product, here I'm checking for that particular course. How you can narrow it down is you can use a filter and you can say that the new course was purchased by the user, yes or no. If it wasn't, which is where you connect with your own timeout node, you can again show a user another um, action block. For example, here I've selected a web inline content. And what I've done is in case the web inline was not visible or not viewed by the user, I've also selected an email to be sent out to the user. This is where I'd ideally want to um, sort of stop my journey for any user or stop the upselling journey for some time. But if you want, you can continue with next steps of whatever you want the user to take next or whatever you want the user to start with next. I'm lastly going to go again into this and help you explain the geofence trigger. So for example, you want to run a campaign for users who enter or exit into, a, into an area that you've described is how users will enter into this trigger. So once you click here, you can select trigger the journey when the user enters or exits your location. You can search for a location here. For example, I'm going to put Mumbai. And within Mumbai also, you can sort of understand which area you would want to target. So if, for example, if I want to target Andheri, and you can use this to expand your area. So any user within within this red um, within this red circle, any person entering within this red circle will be qualified for this journey and will enter your journey. Now, this trigger would be very useful for campaigns that you would want to send to users when they're near your offline stores or when they're near your offline centers. And this can be used to send a nudge to users who enter within this area. And you can again follow with whatever action triggers you'd want to follow here. So now we've covered a lot of what triggers are, how to use all these triggers, actions, conditions, and flow control. So I hope this was clear enough for you to just get the hang of what Journey Designer is, understand the basics, and I hope this was helpful enough for you to get started with any, uh, with any basic triggers that you would want to set up on your platform. Thank you so much for joining me on this webinar. And we'll be taking up questions now. So if you have any questions, feel free to post or put your comments in, and we'll take them one by one. And this is also a reminder that um, after this webinar, the second webinar on Tuesday, we'll be discussing advanced use cases for Journey Designer. So if you have already set up your basic use cases and want to get started with some advanced use cases, that is something that you would want to not miss out on. In case there are no um, questions at this point, we will end the webinar. However, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section.
and rest assured we'll also be sending you a cheat sheet which will help you with all the use cases that we discussed today in this webinar and will also help you understand how you can implement those on your web engage dashboard